Okay, let's talk about the binomial option pricing model. We start this out with an unrealistic example, but we'll make it more realistic later on. Let's say you currently have a portfolio, and that portfolio consists of two things. You are long some amount of stock. We'll call it delta shares. So I don't know how many delta is. I don't know if it's one, two, three, or a half, but you have delta shares of some stock. You've also written a call option, which means you're short one call option. Okay, so now I want to think about what could happen with this stock uh, and with this whole portfolio. The stock is currently worth $40. I can see that by looking at the price in the open market. I've sold this option, so I get to say, well, it's the strike price is $42, and it's going to mature or expire in one year. And now we have to make a couple of assumptions. So here's today. Today the stock is worth $40. So S subscript 0 is the value of the stock today. It's 40 bucks. The stock is going to do one of two things. And this is not realistic, but close enough for us. The stock will either go up in value. So I'm going to have this U here. And I'll say if it goes up, it's going to go up 10%. And I'm going to say if it goes down, it goes down 9%. So in other words, if I, I say S U, S times U is equal to $44, and S times D is equal to $36. All right, now what about the call option? Um, the path to the call is the max of 0 and ST minus X. So if the stock goes up, my stock's worth $44 a share, that's great, but at the same time, I have to pay the guy who bought the call option from me, and that's the max of 44 minus 42 and 0, so I have to pay the, the guy owning the call, so this is C subscript U is equal to $2. If the stock goes down in price, the value of the call is 0, so C subscript D is equal to 0. And I'm trying to find the value of the call today. So how can I do that? I'm sitting here today, I know the call will either be worth $2 or $0. How can I figure out what it's worth exactly? And the key insight here is I want to make this portfolio riskless. So I want to say, I don't care if the stock price goes up or down. And that's the only two things that can happen. And if it goes up, I own delta shares of something that's worth $44. So my stock position is worth delta times 44. But I have to pay $2.00 to the guy that bought the option from me. If the stock price goes down, I have delta shares of stock that's worth $36. If I own exactly 0.25 shares, then I don't care if the stock price goes up or down. So 0.25 times 44 minus 2 is equal to $9. And 0.25 times 36 minus 0 is equal to nine dollars. So who cares if it goes up or down, it's going to be worth nine dollars. Using that insight I can find the value of the call. Because I know today I bought 0.25 shares that cost forty dollars. I sold a call. I don't know what it's worth, but I know that the payoff of this portfolio next year will be exactly nine dollars regardless of what happens. But I can't set this equal to nine because that's nine dollars in a year I need to find the present value of nine and I want to do this in continuous compounding if you haven't seen that we can deal with that later but what you do to get the present value of a number when continuous compounding you say e to the minus RT so what is R? R is going to be the risk-free rate it's the risk-free rate because there's no risk in this portfolio so the risk-free rate is five point seven one five percent I just made that number up uh, but you would look out in the market and see what that is five point seven one five percent times the number of years times exactly one year so I pay ten dollars for the stock today I sell a call option to get some money and I wind up with eight dollars and fifty cents so what's the value of the call the value of the call is a dollar fifty Okay, so let's look at this just briefly again. 
the stock either goes up or it goes down. And if I buy 0.25 shares and the stock goes up, I have $44 a share times 0.25. I have $11 worth of stock. Buy sold an option, I got to pay that guy $2, so that's worth nine. If it goes down, the option expires unused or unexercised, so it's zero. But my stock is only worth $36. I have one fourth of a share, so that's nine bucks. So either way, this option, I mean this portfolio, this portfolio would be worth nine dollars in one year. So this is, you know, today, this is one year, so it's going to be worth nine bucks in a year. Well, nine dollars in a year is the same thing as eight fifty today. So this portfolio, I'm willing to pay eight dollars and fifty cents for today. The stock costs ten dollars. That means I must have sold the call for a dollar and fifty cents. Okay, from this we can see what matters when pricing options. The price of the stock today, I need to know that, right? Because it goes right here. The strike price, I got to know that, right? Because it goes right in here to determine the 2 and the 0. The time to maturity, I have to know that because it comes in this present value formula. The risk-free rate, I have to know that because it comes in the present value formula. There's one other thing I need to know. I need to know the U and the D. And I just made those up. Where it really comes from is the volatility. Lowercase sigma is the volatility of the stock. We'll talk about volatility later on. But basically it's this. It's how much the stock can go up or how much the stock can go down. What's the sensitivity or the riskiness of the stock? This is measure the risk of the stock. So given that information, um, I can come up with this price. Another couple of things here. All these I can observe. I know this. I can see it. I can see this one. I can see this one. I can see this one. This I can't observe. So I don't really know what that number should be. And that's the biggest trick in trying to, to value these. Okay, so that's kind of the intro video. Uh, and then I'll make a part two here in just a few minutes.